Hey, sa a. Okay na. So, let us all pray in silence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our loving and generous God, we praise and thank you for the bountiful blessings you have given us. Thank you for giving us a mind to know and a heart. Okay. That can love. Thank you for giving us the chance to continue learning. Let us begin by putting ourselves in the presence of the Almighty God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in it, we glorify your name for you are good and loving. You have given us these magnificent creations we enjoy daily. Lord, we praise and thank you for the blessings you have showered upon us. You are the source of all knowledge and truth, and we seek you, asking for your guidance and protection as you bless us with this opportunity to gather virtually. Despite the challenges each one of us face, help us learn together so we could grow together in wisdom and understanding. Give us the thirst to pursue knowledge and the humility to acknowledge that our wisdom is incomparable to yours. Help us value each other's opinion. Lead us to inspiring discussions. Help us appreciate one another's work. Open our hearts and our minds to receive new things. Bless our speakers and facilitators with courage and determination to share to us what you have placed in their hearts so that they can impart to us something worthwhile. Bless all the participants with patience and endeavor to persevere. May we become worthy to receive what we will learn today. Let this event be a success and at the end of the day, may all of us accomplish something meaningful. Thank you, Father God, for the responsibility and the privilege to What Papa? ang among mga paghangyo imong pagtanggo please bless the efforts for this we lift everything to you o Lord salamat sa iyong pagkamakayo please speak for us in your holy name Amen in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit Amen isa wait sa ha isa Eto ta papa ta. Okay, so good afternoon again. Is this visible?
और रद्दी नती आती अच्छा Okay, may I ask is if my screen is already visible on your end? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. Thank you for confirming. Okay. So, all right. So, our next topic is all about uh, is about the formula of crime, anatomy of crime, the law, and of course, the concept of criminal law and the basic principles that governs our criminal law. So, this is our prepared topic for this afternoon. So, let us first discuss what is um, actually Balinesia. It's S, right? It's 3 plus S. Okay. So, your, your formula of crime simply explains why criminal behavior do exist. Okay. So, according to Abraham's sin, that the criminal behavior will exist based on this given formula. T stands for your criminal tendency. Your S stands for the conducive or in, uh, or conducive or, or or inducing situation or opportunity itself. So T plus S over R. So ang R niyo refers to your resistance to temptation. Resistance to temptation normally comes if you do have a strong conscience if your your super ego is strong and also this is uh, represented also by the good values inculcated by your parents so it does not totally mean abika you do have the tendency plus you do have the very kind of inducing situation na pwede na ka kayo makakumit ng crime it is not automatic na maka buhat tayong kagkaroon. Because it depends on your resistance to temptation. Okay. Okay. So, niyong kang tedia represented by your tendencies, meaning to say, this is represented by your individual tendency. This is, this is more on the internal factor. Unsa man ka, problemado pa kagkwarta, unsa man ka, do you have antisocial behavior? Unsa man ka? Do you have anger management issue? These are all some of the many examples of a tendency. Okay, individual tendency. Again, individual tendency, this focus on the internal factor of crime. So this is more on the person. On the other hand, your your S itself, okay, your S itself represents the situation. Karabang setting or opportunity nga very tempting na kaayo for you to commit a crime. And as what I have mentioned, your R is represented by your resistance. Okay, so that is the primary reason why in the midterm period we have discussed about the id, the ego, and the super ego because you need to remember that your um your ego is the so-called realistic principle so if your realistic principle will listen more on the super ego which talks about the r which is represented to your resistance to your conscience to your good values in the application of your realistic principle, which is the ego, ang may tabo, is that you will not be tempted to commit a crime. Okay? One good example. One good example. Examples, a student, you're taking, you know what? Cheating is considered as an offense. Okay, in any public and private institutions, it is clearly stipulated in the student handbook that cheating is considered as an offense. Okay, so talking about offense, you need to remember, for example, 
in the face example la face to face class classes okay dahil yung pagkauman ang nahita po is that uh, you were already informed by your teacher that you will have an exam okay ang problema you did not study okay you prioritize things that are less important compared to your studies and you know what i mean okay so asa man ato ang ibutang ana ang tendency ang ang individual tendency ang tendency diya is ikaw mismo you are not prepared to take the major examination even if you know very well that this is a scheduled major examination. Kaya nga naman, what should lagi kagatuon? Because again, you prioritize things that are less, more important. Kasi yan, anong gabrief man yung background? Okay, that are less... Ayok, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Ayaw na, kuya, wanta. Okay, that are less important. So, mo yung nga, ma'am, asa mabutang ang inducing or conducive situation or opportunity para mo cheat. Oh, example, gitawag inyong teacher. Ibis inyong teacher, rag tiger look, ayaw ninyo ba? Ya, kay naamay, nangita niya, nigawas siya. Kanang pagtalikod lamang daan sa inyong teacher is already a conducive situation for you to cheat, for you to ask for the answer sa inyong classmate nga nagtuon. However, I am not saying, as what I have mentioned earlier, that automatic mo talikod ang maestra manuwid mo. No! Because naapamantay from the T plus S, napatay over, what's that? Over R. Okay? So again, magdipindi na po na, bisag wala kay toon, bisag ni talikod yung maestra, it will totally depend on your super ego. Your resistance to temptation. So, if your resistance to temptation is very weak, amay tabo, amano, with you ka. But if you believe in a saying that it's better to get a perfect zero than a stolen 100, or you believe in the saying that it's better to get a genuine knowledge than a stolen one, so in short, your resistance will prevail kaysa imuhang tendency than the conducive situation. You get the point. Question? Oh, another good example. Nag Kinanglan kayo ka, oh, what's this? Kinanglan kayo ka cellphone because you're in the blended class. Pagkaw man, pag ato ni mo, oh, tindahan na ay, pag pungko ni mo, kaya mo, dine in lagi ka. Okay? Na ay, nabilin niya cellphone. Hmm. Kaya nabilin na cellphone is already an inducing situation or an opportunity for you to have a cell phone. But then again, if you were, if your parents were able to conculcate, inculcate rather, good values, and if your super ego, your conscience is properly developed, ang may tabo, bisan pag naan ang tiptasyon diya, you will not get the phone. You will not steal the phone. But if you're Resistance to temptation is very weak. Matik ibutang sa bulsa. Do you get my point? So, muna yung explanation ni Abrahamson in terms with explaining as to how criminal behavior arises or occur. Okay? Aside from that, we do have the anatomy of crime. So, anatomy of crime, this talks, anatomy of crime is equal to intent, meaning to say, naka-intents yun nga mo commit of crime. Instrumentality, meaning to say that the instrument or the method that you utilize in committing a crime. Opportunity is ang opportunity or situation or conducive, uh, inducing situation for you to commit a crime. So these are the kuan, components on the anatomy of crime. Okay? Okay, another thing is we do have law. Isa ako, saling ibalin na. Pabili ka, sige, minimize. Another is we do have law. So, ang law itself is a general rule of conduct 
It is just, it is obligatory, laid by a legitimate power for common observance and benefit. Ano gayon mo dito? Laid by the legitimate power. You need to remember, okay, that in the Philippine government, na atay three branches of the government. Atom, branches of the Philippine government. So, na atay three branches of the Philippine government. Okay? So, these three branches includes the executive, which is the office of the president, the legislative, which is the office, I, which uh, refers to our Congress, senators, and all. And the judicial branch or judiciary, these refers to your court, okay? The judge and the justices. So, talking about um, how this one a uh, three branches of the government works. Ang trabaho sa legislative branch is to make laws. Meaning to say, magpanday ug balaod. Okay? Magpanday ug bill. Muna mo undergo ang usaka bill into a kuan reading in the in the lower and in the upper house, in the Congress and in the Senate. Okay? Usa may trabaho sa ato ang executive. Okay. The work of the executive or the president, usa sa iyahang mga trabaho, is to approve the laws that were created. Okay. And has passed the readings in the legislative branch. So, si president ang approve Ang legislative ang create Okay. While, on the other hand, the job of the judiciary or the court itself is to ev evaluate and interpret the law. So what do you mean by interpret the law? The moment that a, 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 a an information, okay, a case is filed in the court, ang trabaho sa tuwang judiciary is of course to make sure that what is stipulated sa balaod is nasanod. Same as kanabang allowing the accused to enjoy all of his statutory right okay or right of the accused or the miranda uh, uh, doctrine itself okay another thing usa sa trabaho sa judiciary is to make sure that in terms of promulgating judgment when you say promulgating kaya ba giving of judgment ba dapat ang paghatag ni judgment is based on what is written in the law dili kay kung unsay trip nila una gitawag siya evaluates and interprets the law. Okay. So, may go mama, mo may connection, Anna, niya. Because we're talking about the legitimate power. Okay? Kay laid by the Congress and approved by the court and interpreted by the judiciary. Okay? For the common observance and, of course, benefit of everybody. You need to remember that law itself is very important. Kano man, it regulates our interaction with one another. Aside from that, ang balaod is very important because it is the only tool that is utilized, okay, by the Philippine machinery in maintaining peace and order in the society. Another thing, law is very important in the society because people, uh, this allows people to live in peace. Okay? To live in peace and of course, to have a sense of security. Remember, in order for us to be okay, in order for us to be safe in the hangland, that our state there is a so-called state of security equilibrium. Okay? Pero kung kanang pagawas lamang ni Mudaan, mahadlo ka mas natsan, kadag ka mga kawatan, mahadlo ka mo kuan sa mong ATM, kadag kang dag, uh, ma, uh, dag kan kayong tigbutang o gagmay nga si kandak o ATM scheming. So if, if you do have this kind of feeling, so there is already an imbalance of your feeling of security. Okay, so pinaagi sa balaod and its enforcement, of course, you will feel safe, you will feel that, uh, you will have the feeling of security. Another thing, the people's duty is to obey. Correct, people la, dili na Pilipino, but including foreigners. 
as long as they are within the Philippine territory. Ma-water ba na, ma-land ba na, ma-sea ba na, ma-air ba na, as long as they are within the Philippine archipelago. So, journey, meaning to say, kajut ang stay because having a vacation, or residing, tagadirig yun, you need to abide the law. Okay? In order to protect the rights of each other. Talking about the rights of each other, I have already discussed this, pero ako lang usbon. Okay. Talking about Bill of Rights. Okay. So, Bill of Rights na to is under the Philippine Constitution 1987. So, Bill of Rights na to is composed of 22 sections. Your Bill of Rights, your Article 3 Bill of Rights of the said Constitution no provides the different constitutional right of every Filipino. Part of it is kanang freedom to kuan, freedom to of expression. Mm. So you do have the right to express your sentiments. Pero if your sentiment is against the government, pwede rega ko. As long as you are not inciting rebellion, wala problema na. But if you are already inciting rebellion, now oh, that is no longer exercising of your right. You are already committing a crime. Okay, another thing, kanang right to travel. Oh, matumog, ja matumog uh, Japan, you will go to Baguio, you will go to Manila, you will go to Siargao, you will go to Palawan, eh, bahala ka sa kamad to. Okay, so that is also part of your right. That is part of your constitutional right. Nga katungod na ni mga travel. However, in some instances, part of the exemption of such right under the Bill of Rights, Article 3 of the Philippine Constitution, 1987, giingon po niya, nga sa panahon of war, or probably because of health issues, pwede nga bawalan ka nga mudo sa imuhang right, which is to travel. A very good example for that is karon nga na ay pandemic. Kabantay mo atong nag-isikyuta na na checkpoint kaya dili tapagawson. So, kato siya is not in violation of our constitutional rights simply because it is part of the exemptions wherein pwede tang dili palakbol. Okay? For the safety of everybody. Hmm? Wala lagi. Okay. So there are three uh three principles governing the application of the criminal law. So you do have the principle of generality, you do have the principle of perspectivity, and you do have the principle of territoriality. So we will discuss these uh three principles in the criminal law in our next module. Pero karon our main focus is on the definition of criminal law and the different sources of criminal law. So, what's the criminal law? It is the branch of which defines crimes, treats of their nature, and provides for their punishment. It provides. It defines. Okay. Okay. So, a very good example for this is our revised penal code book. Hmm. Okay. Asa tayo giingon, ganina, criminal law defines the crime itself. And that is correct. Because in our revised penal code book 2, uh, book giingon na adya nakasulod ang lain-lain klaseng felonies. Okay? And each of these articles na siya'y elements or prerequisite. So this is how the crime or the felony is being defined para makita nga kanang usa ka crime is disulod siya dali. Like for example, the the crime of treason. So what are how is the crime of treason defined by the criminal law? What are the elements or the prerequisite for a for an act to be considered as treason. 
Una, giingundri. Any person, bisag kinsa, who owes allegiance to the government of the Philippines. Nga, not being a foreigner. O, ko Levi's war against them or adheres to their enemies. Giving aid or comfort within the Philippine island or elsewhere shall be Okay, sige ngon diri. Shall be punishable by reclusion temporal to death and shall pay a fine not exceeding 20 years. Unsa pay laing requirement diri? No person shall be convicted of treason unless there are how many testimonies? Two testimony of the witnesses and at least to the same overt act or confession of the accused. So, unsa pay laing diri? Likewise, an alien foreigner, okay, residing in the Philippine island who commits the act itself Giyong sa niya pag-commit, ning hatag o comfort, ni hatag o kwarta, ni hatag o tabang sa enemy country. Acts treason as defined in paragraph 1. Kani. Paragraph 1 of Article 114. Shall be punished by prison mayor, death to death, and shall pay a fine not exceeding 20,000. So based on the given example of Article 114, as a man, as a defined. So kanisha ang gitawag na to, uh, how the law, the criminal law, defined the the crime of treason. Okay, for kung Filipino, yah kung foreigner po, this is how the law defines the act of treason. Katong provides for their punishment. Oh, nara. So this, kung Filipino ang mo commit, oh, this will be the punishment. Ang iyahang term of imprisonment is reclusion temporal. When you say reclusion temporal, but pasabot, that the term of imprisonment, ang, ang years nga pwedeng iserve is from 12 years and one day to uh, 20 years. Again, 12 years and one day to 20 years. That is reclusion temporal. Pero makita ni mo, dili ara man reclusion temporal gingon up to death. Sa una, naapatay itawag na death penalty. But because of Republic Act 9346, which was approved by the former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, ang nahitabo, wala naging implement ang death penalty sa Pilipinas. Because your RA 9346 is known as an act prohibiting the imposition of death penalty in the Philippines. So, mga na mo, ma'am, wa na may death penalty? Kung sa man nalay sunod. So, mahimo na siyang reclusion perpetua about of life imprisonment. Okay? Okay. Another, so there are different sources of the criminal law. Ang good source of the criminal law is your, of course, your RPC or Book 1 and Book 2. Pero, kabalo mo anong gitawag na siyang RPC? History of... Guys, sa uh, una, ang tawag ana is Kodigo Penal. Okay, let's check if this is the correct information. Ay, wala. Okay. Wala. Ako nila type. Hmm. So, ang atong balaod is what we call Código Penal. Okay? So, muna siya unang balaod and later on, it was then amended by Act. So, ang revised penal ko dili, Republica, it's Act. Act number 3815. So, kay gigan masa sa original word nga Código Penal in the Philippines. 
niya kay gi-amend man siya, muna gitawag na siya nga Revised Penal Code of the Philippines. So imagine na it was first enacted in December 8, 1940. Imagine, unsa na ron, it's already 2021. So muna kang naitabo, since atong gigamit is our PC RAM Yapon, Munang in order to cope up with the demand for justice in the society because of the dynamics of crime. So, munang ang naitabo, wala, though wala gi-revise or gi-usog ang ato ang revised penal code of the Philippines, utro, ang gibuhat lang is gi-amend ang certain articles sa ato ang revised penal code. A very good example for that is the crime of rape okay. A very good example for that is the crime of rape Originally hmm, Okay Kanita Okay. So originally ang rape ni mo this is under article 266. Okay. Pero ang gibuhat is gitransfer na siya sa crime against person under the revised penal code. So tungod kay gitransfer naman, gi-amend man ang article 266 of the revised penal code by Republic Act 8353, ang nahita po again, your crime of rape is already again naa sa crime against person. With that note, it also means nga mababahi o malalaki pwede ng charjan o kaso ng rape. Okay. So, giyun sa pag-define sa RA8353 ang crime of rape. Okay. Giyun din nga, by a man who shall have a carnal knowledge. When you say carnal knowledge, meaning to say there is really a sexual intercourse. Okay? Sabi ni Seya pa, na jirjiran good. Kay carnal knowledge good. Okay? Of a woman under the following. So, yahan na sexual intercourse ang babae with the following circumstance. Okay? Kay rape man, of course, ang unang elementary. Through force. Gipugos. Gihadlok. Okay, or intimidation. Another, when the offended party is deprived of, okay, deprived of reason or otherwise become unconscious. So, for example, si Pedro, yung butangan o sleeping pills, ang ilibno ni Petra, making Petra unconscious of the situation. Okay, so that will fall sa rape. Another, by means, pwede po siyang buhaton sa by means of a fraudulent uh, uh, mechanism, okay? Or grave abuse of authority. Okay, so that will also be an example or circumstance where in pwedeng makakab of carnal knowledge ang usa kalalaki. Another, when the offended party is under 12 years of age or demented, okay, or even though none of the circumstances mentioned present. Another thing, any person who under any of the circumstances, kaninga circumstance mentioned in paragraph 1 shall commit an act of sexual assault, okay, by inserting ang iyahang penis, okay, so, Ang carnal knowledge, dili radi ay pinaagi sa pagpasok sa penis papunta sa vagina. Pero kung ang gibuhat sa lalaki is iyang gi-insert iyang penis papunta sa ba-ba sa babay or gipasok sa lobot, that is also considered as rape. Another good example, okay? Kung ang lalaki, okay, any person, ang babahe ba or malalaki ba, Okay? Wala wala niya gamita yung organ. In, okay? Pero, naggamit po siya o object or instrument. Kung sa may gigamit niya. Cellphone. Kamot. Ballpen. Uh, usa kaya itong usa? <laughs> Pineapple. Mm. 
So if that is the case, gipasok niya sa genital, sa vagina, sa lubot of the other person, that is still considered as rape. So as you can see, parang baka tagja po tag-justice mo nang ang ginabuhat is ginaamend ang mga articles of the revised penal code. One good example is the crime of rape. Nga ang lalaki o ang mapapahi pwede nang ma-filan o kaso na rape. Nga ang rape is dilira pinaagi sa insertion of the penis to the vagina but it is also done by the insertion of the finger of the object okay, to the vagina okay, or to the lobot or, or uh, of the anal or of his. Okay. And even the touching of the genital is so, wala ni mo ko na, pero mo pong ipasok ni mong kamot. That is still considered as rape. Okay? Are you still with me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. lalaki, ha? Inundumi. Yes, ma'am. Lalaki o babahe, maug yun na siya. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mayroon po mo, ma'am. What if ang kuan, underage siya niya, siya mo'y gauna-una na ako. Bakfile lang di ko kaso nga rape. Of course. Mano'y kitawag na itong statutory rape. Okay. Bisag mo pa na yung unang nikirig ni mo dong. Yeah, pagkahingan lang minor do. Hmm. That is considered a statutory rape. Liable na gatong ka. Okay. Another thing. So, unsay another example of the amendment made in the RPC. One another good example sa recent amendment is Republic Act 10951. So, unsa man siya? An act adjusting the amount or the value of property and the damage on which the penalty is based and the fines imposed under the revised penal code. Okay, amending for the purpose of Act 3815. Another source of the criminal law is, again, your RPC, Book 1 and Book 2, and your, your special penal laws or special laws. Kung ang Osaka crime is punishable under the RPC, ang tawag ana is felony. Again, I will repeat. Kung ang Osaka crime is punishable under RPC, that is what we call felony. But when the crime itself or the act itself is punishable under the special law, ang tawag ana is offense. Ang tawag, offense. Both the felony and the offense are generic term for the word crime. Pero kinanglan, kabalo mo, anos ang matawag sa Osaka crime as felony, anos ang matawag ang crime as an offense. Alright? Another good example of the amendment Okay, another good example of special law is your Republic Act, okay, 10591, which talks about the comprehensive firearm and ammunition regulation. So, okay, mo nang ka mo, ayaw mo, sige, daladala o bala, kay mahimo na siyang illegal possession of ammunition. Yeah, remember that the fine for that is quite big. Mo ba yan ang ang naitabo, ang tanimbala, nahimong uso kayo sa mga nat all airports ha? but there are certain mga airports gyud nga uso ang kaning bala kay the the quant itself the person musugot na lamang nga kadabang irusi-rusi ang style sabot-sabot kay para to avoid mga legal prosecution okay so it's very important that you know your right and you know the law okay questions clarifications do you have Okay. Questions, clarifications, do you have? Do you have?